Hi, welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. Rancher Labs has announced the release of Rancher 2.5, which comes with a load of new features. To learn more about this release, we have with us once again, Shang Liang, co-founder and CEO of Rancher Labs. Shang, first of all, it's nice to have you here again. Hi, Swapno. I'm so glad to be here. I'm always excited to talk to you about things, uh, but this is about Rancher 2.5. So tell us a bit about some of the cool things that you personally are excited about. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Rancher 2, I mean, we're, we're on a, a, a twice a year release schedule. So 2.5 uh, came on the very successful release, earlier 2.4 release. And uh, I mean, you can see the the the, the speed at which we're, um, the, the, the space is uh, developing the you know the market is developing and uh, the speed at which we're we're innovating is just getting higher and higher the uh, i'm really excited not just for the uh features we have which i'm going to talk about in uh, 2.5 but it, it it's it really sets the foundation for the next major release of rancher which we hope you know once we uh close the acquisition with Sousa, we should be working on the next major 3.0 release. So I can't wait for that. And let me, right. yeah, let me get into uh, uh, some of the high level highlights of, of Rancher. So as you know, uh, Rancher has a pretty much of a unique perspective uh, in the Kubernetes space in that we believe Kubernetes uh, is the standard computing platform that will run everywhere. And we don't have to be the vendor that uh, stands up Kubernetes clusters or even operate Kubernetes clusters for you. So for Kubernetes clusters, you'll get all kinds of Kubernetes clusters in the cloud. You should certainly use uh, a you know cloud-based Kubernetes service like EKS or AKS or GKE. Uh, but what Rancher does is we uh, help you uh, stand up. We have a great Kubernetes distro for data center called RKE. And then we have a, a Kubernetes distro called K3S for edge environments. But most importantly, we have a management platform called Rancher that really takes advantage of all that consistent Kubernetes infrastructure out there and turn it into a unified uh, global computing platform for the enterprise. So that's what Rancher is. And we've been building this for, you know, uh, three years. Uh, it's actually been releasing for. We've been building it even longer than that. And and you, you, once I tell you what's coming, you get a feel how mature this platform really is. So uh, uh, up until now, uh, uh, until two point four, you've had to essentially set up Rancher as a management platform uh, standalone. Like usually, what people do is they procure some. Um, uh, you know, some servers, virtual machines, and then and then Rancher would be just like any other piece of enterprise software that you would install, and then you manage. Um, uh, you know, it's it's backup, it's uh, high availability. It is it is actually a management platform, right? But uh, internally, though, Rancher always leveraged Kubernetes to accomplish that. So starting from two point five, uh, where uh, Rancher would just be a pretty simple piece of software that you can install on any Kubernetes cluster. So you have a, you know, you have an EKS cluster already running. You can actually just install Rancher on top of it. And obviously that Rancher would start to manage the EKS cluster you installed on. And, and then it can then you can register a lot of other clusters for the, you know, for the same Rancher management server to manage. So that's a that's a huge change. It, it all, we, we really believe it all as more and more people st start to adopt these cloud hosted Kubernetes clusters and start to, um, uh, the, you know, uh, fewer and fewer people actually end up managing their own clusters. It's, it's really important for Rancher to step up and be able to run on any Kubernetes cluster. As you mentioned earlier that, you know, um, the merger acquisition will be closing soon. Uh, when I was reading through it, and as you said, you know, it's installable on every cluster. So it's not tied to any particular platform. It's not going to be a lock and It will still be uh, the same flexibility that customers have always had. It will really go beyond that if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I mean, because what's, we, we see what's happening in the industry is, 
I think a lot of the other vendors, uh, the very powerful vendors, very, very good vendors, but they primarily are doing almost doing Kubernetes for the benefit of their own platform, the rest of their platform. Say, if I were a uh, cloud provider, I'd say, I'll do Kubernetes uh, for my own cloud, and I do it really well, right? And I'll try to add things that are very special to my own Kubernetes service that only runs on my cloud. If I were a virtualization vendor, I'd say, you know, I really leverage um, uh, my own virtualization platform and maybe make my, you know, Kubernetes clusters run more efficiently. So everyone's kind of trying to do stuff like that. We look at this market very differently. Rancher leverages Kubernetes. Is it, it, you need Kubernetes to run Rancher, but Rancher doesn't have to give you Kubernetes. I mean, we think Kubernetes is a standard, just like TCP IP is a standard. You know, in the world of a networking, you don't necessarily want to buy, you know, switches and routers from the same vendor that you use to buy, say, uh, network cards and Ethernet cables, right? Like once there's a standard, you should be able to, it should be everywhere. And, 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 and Rancher does make a Kubernetes platform, which primarily runs in data centers and, and, and on the edge, RKE and K3S. But I think our focus for, for essentially for Rancher to conceptually get thinner as it become more powerful. Now it's something you can really take and, and, and install on whatever Kubernetes clusters you already have. What about edge use cases? Yeah, it's that's a that's you know actually Rancher two point five has four major features and and the, the way I talked about it can install everywhere is is the first one. But edge is another one, second one of our four focuses. So uh, as it turns out, um, uh, edge is a you know we've been working on Kubernetes on the edge for a while. You know, K three S actually went GA last year. But one thing we're noticing is. Uh, 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 the scale has really grown. Scale in the sense of a uh, number of clusters. So, you know, on the edge, people typically, because these edge nodes, they don't have very high bandwidth connection to the central uh, uh, management server or even between each other. So what tends to happen is these edge nodes tend to form fairly small clusters, sometimes just a single node cluster. So if you're in a you know, CDN kind of scenario, you could imagine some, you know, a CDN provider would deploy five servers, ten servers in a points of presence in an ISP, and then and then that would be a you know a small cluster of five, ten servers. But overall, there will be a lot of them. You know, if if people are deploying IoT gateways or five G base stations, literally, we're now we're talking about uh, not just hundreds or thousands, but tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, upwards to a million. So so Rancher has to be uh, scalable enough to do that. And, and it's not just a scale issue. Once you get to that scale, uh, the traditional way of, uh, of management doesn't work anymore. You know, the traditional uh, management, like Rancher is no different. Um, we, you know, you kind of, you know, you connect to a cluster, you upgrade it, you point and click, you, you, you modify its status. But once you have so many of them, you can't obviously do it one on one, one uh, on one by one basis. So we found uh, that really the solution to that is turned out to be GitOps. So the nice thing with GitOps is you 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 check in your desired state into Git, and then you kind of rely on our system, right, to bring everything up to the to the desired state, and and it keeps a history of. Uh, uh, of everything you can, if something is not successful, some rollout is not successful, you can revert back. It's a tremendously good uh, 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 platform uh, framework for people to manage a, a, a large number of edge deployments. So we, um, uh, you know, we obviously, ranchers always supported these industry standard uh, GitOps frameworks like uh, like Flux and Argo CD, but we turned out for the edge case, these frameworks are actually not quite scalable enough. So we ended up creating a project called Fleet, uh, which we launched about six months ago. And now finally, it's 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 GA. It's ba Fleet is basically about GitOps at, at edge scale. You know, so you can um, uh, you can roll out. Uh, changes. You can roll out configuration changes, application deployments to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, upwards to a million uh, points of presence uh, through the centralized um, uh, uh, rancher server following a GitOps paradigm. So that is the that is our big announcement around Edge. 
And as I remember last time when we talked about was also that you're also catering to uh, public sector or governments also, which also means uh, what about security? Uh, so yeah, uh, that is there. Mm -hmm. that is our third area of announcement. Three or four. Thank you for asking that because you know as we uh, we've been talking about Kubernetes everywhere. So one. Uh, place that we increasingly see adoption of Kubernetes is the high security environments. These are typically um, either uh, 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 high security, um, uh, you know, air gapped data center environments, or sometimes you know we 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 literally have have folks running you know Rancher and Kubernetes out there in the field in combat zones, you know, literally. So so uh, so in situations like that. You uh, the software not only has to be reliable and and, and remotely manageable in an intermittent uh, connected uh, environment, but it has to be highly secure. The whole software stack has to go uh, receive a stringent uh, government certification. So we are you know in this release uh, we're very pleased to to be shipping a uh, a special version of our RKE. It's our you know RKE for for government. Uh, you know, initially really targeting the U.S. government, uh, but once you meet the need for U.S. government, uh, then you can also turn out that the rest of the world um, uh, very much conform to the same set of standards. And we, we you know, we have to ship CNCF certified and FIPS enabled uh, our software stack, and we have to really have to make sure that that we we work with uh, uh, you know the already certified other. Um, uh, parts of the software stack from from our partners, and 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 we can deliver that level of trust and certification, so we can we can get the approval uh, to operate in in these kind of environments. So RKE government uh, is the is the third feature that we're off uh, where three of the four capabilities we're announcing in this release. And so these are the three things that I was personally interested in. What is the fourth one? Can you talk about that? Yeah, the fourth one uh, uh, very much aligns. Again, very, I mean, everything is around Kubernetes everywhere, right? So, uh, uh, so one 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 area we we continue to see is uh, uh, in the cloud, especially in public clouds. Public cloud providers continue to make investments into their Kubernetes services. So in the early days, you know, when we started. Rancho was actually a launch partner of Amazon EKS, which is by far the most popular uh, Kubernetes, uh, cloud-based Kubernetes service. But early EKS was quite simple. Early In early EKS, you pretty much run a, uh, a cloud formation script to, you know, to stand up the cluster. And there was, you know, then Amazon just takes it over and runs it, manages it for you or for day two operations. So it, there, there really aren't many knobs and bells and whistles around that. But over time, Amazon's really stepped up. And now if you look at uh, EKS clusters, it has so many capabilities on its own that, that it actually kind of rivals almost like a, 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 a container management platform by itself, but it would only work on Amazon. So, so, so now uh, customers have an interesting challenge. They can, they can just adopt EKS-based tools and then have their solution only work on Amazon, or, or maybe they kind of deal with, again, multiple different interfaces. So what Rancher has to do is we stepped up in 2.5, we actually dramatically improved our EKS integration. So now we call it full lifecycle management of EKS clusters, which means customers can do everything they can do with EKS natively, which by the way is getting much, much richer, right? Through Rancher with again, a whole bunch of value add that Rancher's uh, uh, added on top of EKS, like enhanced monitoring, like enhanced troubleshooting, centralized RBAC policy and authentication. So I'm very, very excited about this capability. I think with uh, given EKS as the most popular uh, uh, a, a Kubernetes service and, 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 and Rancher is the most popular enterprise Kubernetes management platform, you combine both of these, it's, it's gonna drive massive adoption. Sheng, thank you so much for taking your time out today and uh, talking about this release. Before we wrap the uh, wrap up, uh, do you have any closing thoughts? No, I think uh, you know again we're 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 steadfast in our journey toward enabling Kubernetes everywhere, 
and uh, ranchers fully it's a fully open source open platform please check it out if you haven't already done so awesome thank you thank you very much Shipno.